Hi everyone, Lisa Stones Peck from Spellbound Miniatures here and today we're going to make some hinges, handles and a sliding bolt for the stable door. Of course you can fit these onto any of our doors. You'll notice here that I've got three different sizes of the file in design space. I like to cut out several different sizes and then I can place them on the door and work out by eye which one I find most pleasing. So here we are on the workbench with the pieces cut out and I've decided that the smaller ones are the ones that look best on the door. The door handle when it's flat is just under one and a half inches, 33 millimeters. And when I was looking at the hinges, I decided that the hinges looked better smaller. They're just about, I think, 24 mil and just under an inch. So I ungrouped those in design space and shrunk the hinges down even smaller. And I've decided that I'm going to put two at the top and two at the bottom and the same again on the back. So I'll need eight hinge plates in total, two door handles, two keyholes and one sliding bolt for the back of the door. All these pieces can just go in your stash, you never know when you're going to need an odd piece of door hardware. So next you need to decide where you'd like your hinge plates to go. I fit them by, and by eye at first without gluing them and roughly space them out to where I think looks good. And then I think that's about one centimetre in from the top edge. So I decide to do a centimetre in from each top and bottom edge. I just mark that in pencil. It can be rubbed off later. I'm not going to paint over it. And then I decide, actually, probably the other side of the pencil mark looks better. You'll notice when you cut craft board that the edge that's on the mat is always neater than the edge that's on the sort of up in the air. So I like to stick the rougher edge down and the neater edge on top. So I'm just going to glue those down using tacky glue. And once they're all glued down, we can decide on where we want to put the door handle and the keyhole. As always, have a good play around without gluing it first. See which way you prefer. I decided that I preferred the keyhole nearer the join of the two doors. And I'm imagining the sliding bolt on the back would go on the bottom door. So I glue the keyhole down. 
cocktail stick is handy here just to place it and nudge it so it's central on that plank, first plank of the stable door. And next for the handle, where the fleur-de-lis joins onto the handle, you'll see there's a sort of a definite bottom of the fleur-de-lis on either side. Put my thumbnail there and bend the craft board. And do the same on the other side. Then get something that's got a nice round edge to it, like a paintbrush, and roll the handle over to create a nice curve in the centre of the handle. And then you'll see when you press the two fleur de lis together, you get a nice bowed shape there, where you would put your hand behind to open the door. and we simply glue each fleur-de-lis in place, making sure that the handle's lifted off enough that you can put your hand behind it to pull the door to. Now it's your choice whether you do the next bit before you glue the handle on or afterwards. I like to do it afterwards so that I've got exactly the curve that I want. I wash some super glue over the craft board and it makes it nice and stiff and sturdy. I do it over the whole thing and you can also do it over the keyhole and the hinge plates and it just gives them an extra dimension. If it dries too shiny, I paint over it with some black acrylic paint. You can do this before you glue the handle on, it's up to you. So now to make the sliding bolt. Although I'm using the smaller sliding bolt faceplate, I'm actually going to show you on the slightly bigger one in the hopes that you can actually see what I'm doing. You need the sliding bolt plate and you will need three of those little vertical pieces. For the, and then you'll need a fourth one for the catch on the other side. And the vertical pieces go where there's kind of bumps along where it's thicker or taller on the back plate. So we get the vertical piece and much like we did with the handle, with the fleur-de-lis, we pinch a very tiny bit at the end with our nail and create another angle, fold it over. I'm just trying to work out here exactly how much. Just a, enough to make a right angle to glue down and do the same on the other side. And this is exactly the same way we did the handle. So we create two edges to glue down and then get a smaller diameter paintbrush and bend this piece around it. And these verticals are going to create the loop that the bolt slides in. So that's what we're doing here. Those are the sort of bumps where the vertical pieces are glued, top and bottom. You just need a dot of glue on each bit that you bent back. And it's very difficult here for me to get my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing 
and glue the thing on at the same time. You don't want any of the vertical strip overhanging the hinge plate, so that's the most important thing, is to make sure that they're in line with the edge of it. And then I got a clamp to just add some extra pressure there. So now I'm going to do the, exactly the same thing but for the smaller bolt plate with the smaller verticals. Use tweezers if you need to, to hold the smaller pieces while you glue them and to help you stick them on. And then do the same with one vertical and attach it to the smaller catch plate. This will be going on the door frame for the sliding bolt to slide into to lock the door. So once you're happy with your door handle and hinges on one side we turn it over and put the hinges in the same way on the other side. and then do the same with the keyhole and the door handle. Next, decide where you want to put the sliding bolt plate and the corresponding catch on the door frame. Glue them down and when you glue the catch down use a cocktail stick to line it up so that it will slide into the rest of the bolt housing and press the catch down onto the door frame with the cocktail stick in place. If you're making a smaller bolt and using wire, the same process applies. To make the bolt, I use a cocktail stick, a small piece of wire and a bead. And this bead has a hole in the middle. The first thing I'm going to do is simply super glue the wire into the bead. I put the bead down on my silicon mat, put a tiny drop of super glue into the hole, and then using pliers or tweezers, just keep your fingers away from the super glue and place the wire into the hole and leave that to set. Next, I take my very handy mitre cutters, chop the pointy end off of the cocktail stick, slide that into the bolt housing so we can work out exactly how long we want the bolt to be. It's got a it's quite a blunt end at the minute, so we need to sandpaper the end of that bolt so that it slides through more easily. And if any of these sort of the loops come up when you do this, just super glue them back down again and they'll hold fast. Or when you initially glue the bolt housing, you could give it a super glue wash as we did with the handle. Just make sure you don't get super glue in the holes because that's where we want the bolt to go through. So next, get a pencil and mark how long you'd like your bolt to be. And use the mitre cutters again to cut it off on that mark. And then rescue it from the other side of the workbench where it flew across. 
and then take some time to slide the bolt in and out from either end of the bolt housing and make sure that it slides freely. Use some sandpaper to reduce the end slightly or the overall width if, you, if it's just slightly big, bearing in mind if you're going to paint it that will make it even thicker again. So just spend some time sanding and fitting And when you're happy with the fit, you can paint it if you wish in your preferred colour. I'm just using acrylic paint here. And then paint the handle and the tiny little sort of joining piece to the bolt, the wire. And then while I had my black acrylic paint handy, I filled in the keyhole so that you couldn't see the craft board in the little opening and I did that on both sides. So you've still got the dent where the key would go in, but instead of seeing the craft board, it now will look like a hole. Once your bolt has dried, you want to determine now where to fit the handle. So it needs to be able to slide between the first and second loop on the main bolt housing and when it's furthest over to the left in this picture it needs to actually be in the catch on the door frame. So have a little play and then imagine and think if you slide it over where's it going to end up. If you do have small enough drill bits you'll be able to drill into the cocktail stick. If you're using wire, you could solder it. And if not, you're better off probably making a hole with a bradle and gluing it in. So I'm going to use my smallest drill bit here and actually drill a hole through the cocktail stick. I'll show you at the end of this video another way to make the bolt using just wire and it does mean you'll need to make the bolt plate slightly differently. I'm just checking that the handle fits into the bolt first. It's, it's over halfway along the bolt but not I would say a third of the way or two thirds of the way along. So the largest part of the cocktail stick is where the bolt plate is and then the hole should be just over halfway towards the catch on the door frame. But if in doubt, you could trim the bolt after you fitted it from either end. So I just put a dab of glue onto the end of the handle, put that into the bolt, and just slightly twist it as it goes in. and then leave it upright to dry. So here we have the working bolt. It takes a little bit of wiggling at first and then it does loosen up. If anything comes unglued, super glue it back down again. and it works exactly like a stable door should. So now I'll show you how to do the wire bolt. This is some copper wire that I had in my drawer. You can use any wire for this. You just need to make sure that it's thin enough or thick enough to go through the bolt housing, but also be stiff enough to sort of hold its own shape and not be too flexible. And you need a selection of pliers. So work out how long you think you want the bolt to be. You can always cut the ends off and you make a right angle. And then however long you want your handle to be, you create another right angle and then carry on bending the wire back round. You're not making a loop here, you want to make a sort of an exact return, a flat, sort of parallel lines of, of wires. This is a very simple handle. 
and crimp it as tight as you can so there's no gap but don't let the wires cross over and then you want to make another right angle exactly the same height that the first one came in at and then that's the bolt that we're creating there with the handle at the bottom so work out how long you need that next bit to be to go into the catch on the door frame. I'm going to be making this bolt for the larger housing purely because I've got that one spare. So I'm just kind of guessing here. You just need to make sure that the handle will slide between the first and second loops on the bolt housing. Then do the same and create another loop, the same as you did for the handle and then go right back round again on itself. And that's essentially our bolt and handle all in one with no soldering. So cut the ends off so that they're flush. Using some tweezers, lightly clamp the two pieces of wire together, but don't let them cross over each other so they're still sort of straight and parallel. And run some super glue along the groove that's left in between the two pieces of wire. And then if you want to, you can fill in the other grooves and paint it if you'd like a smoother flat finish. But for this purposes, I'm going to leave it as copper wire so you can see it when it's in the bolt housing. So if you remember, we've already glued one loop on this larger bolt back plate. We're now going to glue the third loop on the other end. So there we have the first and third loops. We can now fit the bolt in place. And obviously this one is slightly too narrow, but this is just so that you can see the process. And we need to put the second, the middle loop in place now so that the bolt won't actually fall out. And that goes right in the middle, the same as we did for the first back plate. So that's the second version of the sliding bolt ready for you to put on your door. And of course you'll fit the catch onto the door frame in exactly the same way. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon.